What is up my nerds? It is new motor day for the trail walker. We're going to drop in this fresh team brewed Maelstrom 35 turn into the Element RC trail walker. Woo! But this is the brewed Maelstrom. And if you were wondering what Maelstrom stands for, I had to look it up on the internet. It's like a tornado in the water of some sort like a I don't know I should have looked it up before I started doing this I looked it up a couple weeks ago but team brood's been around for years and years dude is named Eddie and he makes some pretty rad race car motors back in the day and he got into doing some rock crawl so you can barely see the team brood right there but uh, check him out online team brood and uh, he's got a whole bunch of really cool rock crawl uh, motors brush stuff that are a little different these are some like classic race car style design stuff brought into rock crawling format. I thought it was pretty cool. The uh, the shaft has the turns marked on it, so that's pretty neat. But I haven't done brush motor stuff in a minute and was chatting with Team Brood one day and he's like, oh, here, I got some sweet 35 turns. I'm like, no way. So I'm gonna try this out, give it a whirl. Gently place the motor into the truck. Get the, the screws snugged up, being careful not to cross thread, obviously. If they are hard to roll in, you're doing it wrong. And then uh, put the pinion gear on. So gear mesh is a big thing that I run into that folks get wrong. The um, amount of play that you have between the teeth. You basically want to have as little play as you can, but still have some. So there should be like just a tiny ticking, I guess you'd say, between the pinion and spur. Then. You got it about right. And then basically, can you hear that? Ticking, that's way too much. Like I can see less than half the gear is touching. So I'm gonna move this in closer. Check it, I mean you wanna check it all the way around. A lot of times you'll set your gear mesh, for whatever reason, it's not the same all the way around. So make sure you roll the whole spur gear and check everywhere and then snug the screws up and then check it again some sometimes you know if you don't have your motor snugged in there correctly when you tighten your screws it's going to move and you're going to have bad gear mesh again bad gear mesh leads to bad times the other pro trick is you can take a piece of paper very thin paper or sales receipt whatever slide it between the gears mash it together tighten it up and that'll get you pretty close a good starting point if you're uh, having a hard time getting it to work. Rig, I'm gonna have to figure out the direction of the motor again because we kinda had to switch that before. So it's all set up correctly as far as the speed control calibration. So when you change a motor, you do not have to recalibrate the speed control. I run into that a lot. Uh, you just have to change the motor for the most part. The same is pretty true of brushless motors as well. So when it comes to switching the motor, if I hook this up and it runs backwards when I give it throttle, I'm gonna switch the motor wires back because that's the way you should do it. You don't want to switch the controller, your, you know, your, your, your controller to make the, the motors go the right direction. You want to do it with the wires when it comes to brush motor stuff. The only time that that's wrong, that, that applies to a crawler, but like with a go fast rig, if motor has to go one direction or the other, then you're going to run into some problems because the motors have advanced timing. And you know, that makes me think that you should always check the motors just in case. Oops, even some of these rock crawl motors, they're gonna have a little bit of timing in them also. So gear mesh has been set, radio's on, give this guy a whirl, and it looks like everything's going backwards. So most, it, a lot of setups, you'll just switch the wires on the motor, and that's, that's good enough. You can run the motor backwards. For some of the more high-end motors, you actually wanna rotate the end bell to make the motor go backwards. So to do that right, I'm gonna pull this motor out of here, pull it apart and rotate the end bell. It, it's really not as complicated as it sounds, so stand by. So there's a couple ways that you can take a motor and adjust it. So there's a, there's a mark here for your timing. And right now this is going to uh, advanced for forward rotation. If I just loosen these screws and slide this guy to the other side of the, 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 the line, he's gonna have, uh, non-advanced retarded timing and it'll run poorly in forward but it'll run better in reverse 
most motors they want a little bit of mechanical timing in the direction that they're going they definitely don't like running with timing that's the opposite of the direction that they're going so team brood has website go on their website they show you kind of some basics on how to adjust this stuff to make it a little more clear than i am on what makes sense and they have a nice picture that says if you're using a reverse motor you adjust the timing this way or that way and i'm gonna go look at that picture so yeah basically a picture makes it pretty clear that if you're using the motor to go hold on let's think about this for a second Normally, this guy goes this direction, motor goes like that, that's clockwise rotation to make it go, right, let's think about this, that goes like this, so if I'm looking at it, that's clockwise, which is backwards. Well here, I'm just going to do it old fashioned, I'm going to use these jumper wires, I'm going to hook it up here. I'm gonna hook it up here. I'm gonna run the motor and listen to it as I adjust it a little bit. It's just not making sense in my head right now, so I'm gonna try it this way and see what happens. So this is forward. And as I turn the motor this way, that should make it slower. And that's what we want. My, all my RC friends that are watching this right now are like, Charlie, we can't believe we ever thought you were the guru. All right, so there, I'm to the other side of the line. Snug it up just a little. Sounds faster. Man, I forgot how to work on motors. Try way up there. I'm not even gonna tighten the motor back together. All right, so that's getting slower. So that's definitely slower over there. So that means that that should be going the right way. But if we give it a little bit of advance, that direction, that's what we want for running the motor the wrong way. Because if we run it forward and it gets slower, as we adjust the timing, that means we're taking timing away. And that's kind of what we want. There, I th you can go as far as rotating the whole M-Bell around too, but I'm not sure that that's necessary. You just put the wires on backwards and that's good enough. So now when we run it forward direction, this is positive, this is negative, it'll sound like that. If we run it the other way, it should sound better. Yeah, a little bit higher RPM. That means we have the timing advanced that direction. Thanks Team Brood website, the picture made sense. I know I didn't make sense, but it did apply, you know, just like the picture showed. Why can't I explain the picture? I don't know. Now basically all I did was move the screw from one side of the line to the other about the same amount. Pretty easy. And now that's got backwards timing for the correct wiring, but correct timing for the wrong wiring. That makes a lot of sense. So you can figure this stuff out ahead of time by looking at which way your motor needs to rotate and figuring out if it's clockwise or counterclockwise and that'll tell you if you're needing to make any adjustments to your motor most motors that are you know for general usage are going to have some sort of mechanical timing in them that makes them run better one direction or the other and even a rock crawl motor it maybe is going to have a little bit just like these guys did because they run better that way i mean it just it helps performance quite a bit to have a slight advanced timing and it's a real simple adjustment that you can make to kind of make everything work better so well worth it whoa bump the camera check your gear mesh again and again all the way around making sure it's got just that little tick 
the whole way through. Now I'm gonna hook the motor wires back up, backwards, because we need the motor to go backwards, and we've already changed the timing on the motor to make it work a little bit better. All right, we're in business. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, install of a brush motor into my Element RC Trail Walker RTR. I had already put a WP1080 in here and we ran it a little bit. It's got maybe an hour or so of runtime on it, barely. So excited to be able to get back out in the world and give this thing a run. Shout out to Team Brood for hooking me up with these Maelstrom 35 turns. We're gonna put them to the test. And just to recap, with a brush motor, normally if it goes the wrong direction, you just switch the wires. With these, we did one extra step, and that because they have adjustable timing and they have a slight advanced timing for forward rotation, and we're going to run them reverse to make the truck go forward, we had to adjust the end bell, loosen these two screws, and then you rotate this line just to the other side of the line that it's on about the same amount of distance, and you're good to go. And that just allows the motor to run a little bit more efficiently in the direction that we're going to be using it in primarily. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you do have any questions, feel free to drop us an email at northamericanhobbywing.com. See you next time.